Right, welcome to episode two of the HR Movie Department. I'm joined with Big Rob again. How are you doing, Rob? I'm good, I'm good. How are yourself? I'm all right. It's boiling hot in England at the moment, or at least where I am, I'm sweltering. Um, and we have got a guest, as you can see. Um, it's Callum. I've been on your channel before. You, you're finally here talking about one of your favourite films of all yeah, time. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. So I'm here today to talk about the social network on Harrison's channel and... Thank you for having me on. It's nice. brilliant. I'm posted by Callum, by the way. If you want to <laughs> quick <plug>. but... <laughs> so the film we're doing today, you'll, you'll know it from the uh, thumbnail anyway, and the title, obviously, is The Social Network. And, I mean, Callum is probably one of if... What, is it, would you say it's your favourite film of all time? I'd put it in my top five. Your I love top it. Five. I love it. It's quite difficult to, you know... Yeah, now, like, I'm, I, a couple of others, you know, stand out like you know, likes of Hot Fuzz. You know, I love that film. So you know, sometimes it's difficult to pick out a, a favorite favorite. Yeah, I'm sure it's same with you regarding you know Spider Man Two and Batman. You know that kind of that kind of thing. But I do love <sighs> everything. I could I can't really fault the Social Network at all. Yeah, film. Fair enough. Yeah. So you, you so you mentioned that, but I've actually tried. I won't go into it. I've actually tried to do my top 10 movies in order. Oh, jeez. It was very, it's very, very, very difficult. I can imagine. Very yeah. difficult. But obviously before we get in, um, it's directed by David Fincher. Um, I think across the board, we could probably all agree he is a phenomenal director. Yeah, great director. Um, done Zodiac, didn't he? As well. Mm -hmm. a bunch and of other Yeah, and Seven, yeah. Great film. Uh, two hours. It's on Netflix at the moment. The time of recording this, but we'll get into it. So, obviously, Rob hasn't Rob hasn't spoken a lot yet. So, Rob, do you want to start off? What were your thoughts on the film? Yeah, well, just to start off, really, with David Fincher. You know, once again, a great film directed, and like what I like about him is he he doesn't need that like too many characters, kind of to to like base the drama around and, and the vast majority of situations that happen in the film. Like, yeah, like, like I mentioned there, Seven, you know, that that only really had like two, three main characters and everyone else were just extras. And I think this film's the same, you know, with Mark Zuckerberg, Eduardo and Sean Parker probably being the main three. Probably the main two is just Zuckerberg and Eduardo, you'd probably say. Um, so, yeah, like great film that David Finch has picked up quite different as well you know he normally goes for these dark edgy films whereas this one's kind of not really dark dark in a way definitely but kind of a little bit of a twist in certain areas yeah but um great film great film. yeah hey, put it yourself Callum yeah I was gonna say about it's interesting he says about the dark um stuff so it starts off with um Mark Zuckerberg you know he's dumped by his girlfriend so it's disappointing for him but you have quite sinister music I feel quite sinister music and obviously it never goes like because it's not a fantasy or anything and it's not you know, it could be something like Fight Club or anything where you're going to have something quite unbelievable in terms because it's a it's a, a real story but it is sinister if you think about it he's screwed over in the in the process of the film as you watch it you discover he screws over his friends he has to pay out ridiculous amounts of money because of his actions and there is a lot of them um, like quite serious there's obviously near the end there's the whole is Sean Parker trying to blame the whole um, drugs thing? Is, is this a spoilers show, by the way? Just yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, so there's the whole, um, obviously it's, it's really happened as well. So if you know about the whole Zuckerberg lawsuits and you're a massive nerd of that kind of stuff, you'd know. But yeah, it, it, there is dark stuff, as Rob said, but obviously it, it's, it's, it's different because it's a real story. So it's not going to be, mm. you know, all crazy and unbelievable. It's sinister because it's true and um probably yeah. quite a lot of headaches in the in terms of the um, legal battles that actually did happen yeah yeah no it is crazy because although i know not or well, at least mark comes out and says a lot of the stuff in the film isn't tr true and i think with a film like this you're never going to get it 100 percent true because there's two sides to the story mm -hmm. there's mark's side and eduardo's side mm. so you're never going to get the uh, truth but I think it does a beautiful way of showing it. Um, get into a bit of like the deconstruction of the film. I just want to quickly say the theme is actually like beautiful. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think so. What, I, what I've written on my notepad because I didn't, 
I did say I'd write notes for this one. I didn't write notes for the first yeah, you one. You did. You promised that. I did. I have written a, a lot if, if it wants to focus. I've written a lot. Oh, yeah. Damn. Um, so what I've written about the theme is it kind of makes you feel a little bit detached with how kind of slow the piano is on it. I don't know if that's just the way I interpreted it. Because um, obviously the way Mark, he's trying to... The way he's put across is he's trying to detach himself from everyone by putting, whilst putting himself above everyone. Because that's what it is. The film is, it's from Mark's point of view. And I think you do kind of notice that when you realize the only character that really get you hear a lot about is Mark. You don't hear loads about Eduardo apart from a couple of things that come up in the lawsuits. Yeah. Or even the programmers who he was roommates with, who were, I guess, pretty quick key, key people in the yeah. whole real life story yeah. of Facebook. I mean, I suppose there's only of so much you can put into the running time. Even the likes of like the the, the wing is it Winkle or Winkle Boss? Winkle, Winkle Boss. Winkle yeah. Boss twins, yeah. Those two you don't hear much. They're just like that cliche sort of character. I loved all their scenes though. I yeah, loved all their scenes. Thought they're fantastic. And even Sean Park, you don't hear like you don't know a lot about unless you know of him outside of the film, really. Mm. Um, and. I feel like um, what I found with the theme is the longer the theme's played, like there's strings and I believe a bass that gets louder. And the way I interpreted it was we, because it's obviously from Mark's point of view, we're losing ourselves the way Mark was losing everyone who cared for him, like Eduardo. Um, and that always seemed to play within those sort of scenes. And for me, I think what makes a film great or brings a film up a level is the music um don't know if you have anything to add on to the music or if i covered well, most well, of it. i thought the music was fantastic i kind of briefly touched on it from the beginning you know mm. as, as the film starts as he's walking back the film's not even started yet and i'm completely invested in it and it, nothing happens almost for a couple minutes he's just walking mm. or gently jogging back to his dorm after he's dumped but the music just hooks you in. You can tell there's a massive story coming. And I remember watching it recently and just as, as the beginning, so nothing had even happened, but I had Facebook open in the background and like the Facebook ping happened. And I thought, wow, that kind of shows almost how the, the massive event that's about to yeah. happen in the film and the shockwaves that, you know, Facebook had, because everyone knows what Facebook is now. It's, it became a massive website and it's just crazy that at, the, at, at a point that's fairly modern in like 2003, whatever, there, there wasn't a Facebook. Yeah, and it is. It, it's crazy. So yeah, I think I think there's the, yeah, it's quite very formative music for, which I think shows like you know how big of a what, what something something big is brewing and something big is happening. You know, like this massive business investment of Facebook and and massive opportunity. You know, it's 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 the right music for it. They didn't really need a soundtrack where um you know you've got vast majority of. I I, I was looking on the soundtrack actually because um we, we were speaking about it um like a week ago or so. They have um they have a great choice of song at the end, which is um I think it's like a money song by the Beatles, and obviously mm. it's it's to show how how. Facebook's booming, basically, isn't it? You know, but um, yeah, they didn't they didn't need a lot of music. Just good instrumental music was needed. That's what I find about David Fincher as well. He's able to convey like emotion and carry a scene without music, which personally I would say a lot of like modern films struggle to do. Like, mm -hmm. I always feel like they need music or something to make you feel a certain way. So it's kind of like the director not being 100% confident in his work. At least that's the way I see it a lot of the time. Um, like within um, the amazing, the first Amazing Spider-Man, um, I don't know if you've watched, oh fuck, just dropped my phone. Um, I don't know if you've seen the Amazing Spider-Man recently uh, or at all. Um, there's a certain scene and you know, like the typical horror, like piano keys, like the high pitch ones, they, blare those into your ears to make you feel scared whereas if you completely got rid of those you would still you'd feel more tense with no music and again we're just kind of sucking off david fincher here but that's what i think he does brilliantly uh, not not just in this film in seven zodiac gone girl so many a-class films he's done it's crazy yeah. but 
we 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 touched on it briefly. Uh, well, I think at least I did. the character, and you mentioned it, Rob. He can focus on just like three characters, two characters. What were your favorite things about the characters when this film? The character of Mark Eduardo, Sean Parker, right? Um, for me, well, just to say real quickly, um, one thing I had in my notes: Mark Zuckerberg's casting for, as Jesse Ansenberg was spot on. I don't mm. think there's anyone else who could have played a right. I know they, they kind of look sim- similar. Any, I mean, like they would have said to Jesse to, to obviously look like Mark for the film anyway, yeah. but he, yeah, he like his features already, his natural body features obviously already look similar to Mark mm. and um, is a, is a great character for it because I think Jesse's, Jesse's a character who can look like, he, uh, he's an actor who can obviously speak very fast. And I think um, having, having him play Mark, obviously with very quick dialogue shows how shows how Mark's mind and brain works. Uh, he's, he's constantly thinking, he's constantly coming up with innovative and, and fun ideas, you know, for the, for the whole project of it all. But um, yeah, I, I thought the characters were great. Um, Mark and Eduardo, um, obviously Eduardo, like, uh, well, you're, you're a great fan of him, um, Harrison and uh, Andrew Garfield, you know, they, they boom off each other loads it's great to see it's good chemistry there and they got it spot on every every cast in there yeah yeah, yeah. And so, well as justin timberlake as well yeah mm, Parker, yeah a perfect casting and army hammer as well i think worked perfectly for winkle boss twins so you know a lot of the i uh, get a great casting choices spot on i'm trying to think of what other actor could as a, in like an alternative universe what who else could have played that and i'm thinking maybe I, Andy, yeah Andy Sandberg. andy Sandberg. i know he's more of a comedy actor yeah I think again, it, Rob Robo t- r- touched on it. He, what makes Jesse Eisenberg so good is he can sh- portray that kind of like, not so much anxious, but that sort of like, um, what's the word, like fidgety sort of fidgety, like, dead serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it can also talk so fast where he like he wants to get he can't get everything out, and that kind of makes him feel stressed that he can't get it all out. Um, and again, you, like you touched on it, the casting was spectacular. Um, only issue I would say is if he was a little bit taller, but <laughs> you, obviously that's just a nitpick at that point. Like Definitely. you can't you can't complain about height, like something someone can't control. But when we talk about characters, Mark's character in this, did you? Because the way I I view him, I view him for a lot of the film, kind of like an anti-hero to compare it to something. Um, I'm yeah. not sure if you would agree, but I don't know whether he's an anti-hero here. He's just um, <laughs> he's just a person, really. I think he's made a ser- service. I don't think he's evil. I think no. he wanted to create something that was cool, but at the same time, be, it's just human that you want your good ideas, and if you've done something good, you want it to be recognised. And that mm. was he felt that he could do what he was doing better without the Winkle bosses because obviously they. They wanted him to build the website for them, and he yeah, did that, and he went and did his own thing, which um is why the whole lawsuit came about. So, is he evil in ways? Maybe, maybe ways that we didn't maybe see in that film, but mm. he was very serious. I think there were there were bits of good, but I think just generally it, it was just human nature. He wanted to make money, and he wanted to be recognised for the work he'd done. Yeah, yourself, Rob. Yeah, I, I think there's this one evil in this film, and it's not an actual character. I think it's the theme of the internet itself, which can be the evil of the film. So, like, yeah. I, I was, I was saying, I think a clear message is is um, illustrated at the start of the film, um, where obviously Mark goes on the day with, with Erica. Erica breaks up with him. He then goes straight to his uh, campus room and um, goes on the campus network site and and starts slagging her off. And uh, I, I think, and ironically, I think as well, it, it shows how Facebook can be a platform of, of name slagging and, and all this and that. Mm. Um, but I think a great positive is, is when, um, you know, when Mark has, has clearly shown um, his success at Facebook and, and everywhere else, and he tries to get Erica back, um, she rejects him. Mm. And I think, I think there's a great point proven there where like, you know, whatever's said on the internet by that particular person, you know, whether you're, you've got lots of money all of a sudden, or you're, you're a better human being as itself, it never, it's never forgotten about. So I think the evil itself is just the internet yeah, in, in a way, which it's ironic because obviously Mark's telling the story of Facebook and he wants, he wants to show how, how good it is, but 
you know, I think I think it's very humble of him to also say that, you know, it's a platform where people can go on there and, and name slag and, mm. and this, that and the other. Yeah. But again, building on your point, because um, I, I was going to mention it a bit later, but you brought it up, so I'll, I'll mention it now. Um, building on your point, especially that scene at the end, it kind of shows, although everything you put on the internet is there forever, but it also shows like, just because someone said something a few years ago, they can still have regrets and learn from it. Like the scene, the, I think the film's beautiful in the fact that the first scene is obviously like you mentioned him slagging, like him and his girlfriend at getting in an argument and him obviously ending the night single and slagging her off on the internet. But then the film ends with him trying to reconnect to her. And it's literally like a five or so minute scene of him just refreshing Facebook. No, no dialogue, nothing. And for me, that is one of the best scenes in the film. Mm. Um, because, again, it's something that I think David Fincher does well. He can just, he can portray emotion and so many things within a scene with no dialogue. Definitely, definitely. And, and um, real quickly, I, I think as well, like it, it's, it's mental to think that he, it's also kind of showing like, you know, how well what what he's built to, to what we do in the present time like he, he's literally on his own website now and he was the one who made the relationship tag and he's he, he's one of the audience members himself for, for facebook and he's literally doing what i'm sure many of people have done before and refresh someone's profile to see if they're single or not you know yeah he, he made all that which is crazy itself yeah it is crazy like do you think although we knew facebook we knew about facebook did this film, I'll ask this to you first, Cam. did this film put into perspective how big it actually is? Yeah, absolutely. I touched back on the point I made earlier when I was just, the film was starting off and I had Facebook open on, on the computer in the background and my, the little messenger ping went off. I mean, that just kind of showed like, wow, yeah, this is massive. It's still in everyone's lives now. And even if as Facebook expands, if it owns so many companies now, yeah. like, like Meta, whatever it is now, it's just it's grown to ridiculous scale and it, mm. it does make you think about how um how crazy it is he was just in his dorm room i know it's at harvard there's a lot of prestigious people there and a lot of people go to harvard knowing they can be massively successful but it's it's no one's scale. ever going to be successful on the level of mark zuckerberg no, and he, he didn't even finish his degree he just dropped mm. out didn't he he didn't he just yeah no point really of him <laughs> finishing his university his studies there because um <laughs> which is amazing. But um, if I'm touching back on um, Rob, I mean, both your points earlier, Rob spoke about, you know, the evils of the internet in that first scene. And you spoke about, you know, the final scene, which I agree is fantastic. Uh, back at that first scene, again, you just see, uh, I think you see definitely how Jesse Eisenberg was so good at playing Zuckerberg. Because mm. if you watch a, a clip of Zuckerberg talking, I feel like you really see his, the pedanticness and the speed of talking. I know... Mm it kind of calms down in a way for the rest of the film because they've got to actually have the cinematic license and calm the film. But in that first couple of minutes when he's, you can see a bit rude and talk to his girlfriend, he's so quick at talking. The information coming is yeah. so confident. I think that's that was kind of him just freestyling and showing how good he was at playing Mark Zuckerberg and it's such yeah. an impressive scene. Yeah, no. Um, before I went off, I wanted to expand a bit more on my anti-hero point because obviously... We weren't too on board with it. I uh, just thought maybe I'll try and explain, elaborate a little bit more. So much like of an anti-hero is he it, within the film. It feels like he just wants to put himself above people. He views himself above everyone else, mm -hmm. and the way he will do it is by pushing people away or making people fail, pushing people out. For example, when he um, essentially went against the Winkle boss, the bosses. Um, he did he did agree to do it with them but then was like i can do this on my own i don't need you anymore and then done it himself like he made he pushed them to one side so he could do it he again maybe with the manipulation not from sean park he pushed away eduardo um and again that's what <laughs> maybe anti-hero is a little bit of the wrong word because it's kind of uh like the connotations and the implications of anti-hero may not fit it directly but I think a lot of the stuff he does, um, he doesn't, if the way it comes across, whether or not this is how he was, it seemed like he didn't care for other people throughout the film. He just cared for himself, for Facebook, his creation. 
Um, and if people didn't want on his one on board with him a hundred percent, he was just kind of like, or if he knew he didn't need you, he'd kind of just say, well, fuck off. Yeah. Like that's just my sort of a uh, thing. And you mentioned it uh, as well about slagging people off in that scene straight after he gets done. He then makes, uh, was it face mash? Face or something? Mash, yeah, yeah. Face mash at the website. Yeah. 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 Mm. Something about I wanted to touch on is the editing. I don't know if you clocked onto it. So there's a, I can't remember the full quote. I should have written it down on my notes. He referred, like, while he's um, like, objectifying women and everything, he makes a comment about how, um, or compares them to, like, cattle. Yeah, farm animals, yeah. Um, and the editing of that is then, although we're, like, hang about, he's objectifying women, but then it cuts to the women essentially objectifying themselves within the film and essentially being moved around like cattle. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, it, what's what's the meme I'm thinking of? Um, it, he's I mean, out of line, but he's right. <laughs> like, but like, it's kind of like that. Like he's doing that, but then it's like he's also right in saying it. And I think this film is just edited so perfectly. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you have? Maybe I, this. I, might, see, I see you there. Yeah. I have a question. Is there anything about the editing you would change? Is there anything about the film that made you feel a bit uneasy watching it in not so much of like storytelling uneasiness, but in like you you were watching, you were kind of like, oh, I didn't like that decision. Or were you I on board? I think so. I think it was just, it was very focused because I, I think a lot of the film, even if you're not a Harvard University guy, if you're not a Facebook kind of guy, if you're not like a general biopic kind of guy, you can. it's one of them films you can enjoy. But they really did focus, I think, on the whole finals club and... Mm sort of side of it and I did think okay that's interesting they've done that and they're cutting back and I'm, I want to learn about Mark Zuckerberg but they're just showing a final finals club he's not in but obviously it makes sense when you see it later because that's that's his desire and you've just picked up on a really interesting point there about the editing which I didn't think about at mm-hmm. all when watching and it's um quite true the fact that you know he, yeah it's objectifying women but yeah they're objectifying themselves and they are being moved around like cows so yeah that meme is He's not I didn't see that point either. Yeah, it's it is crazy. Yeah, I can't think about anything I'd really change at all. Yeah, yeah. I I think one thing I really like is um just how they tell the story. So um, you know, it's 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 back and forth really from um from the you know the uh, disclosure agreement in in the in the room in, in one of the offices in I assume maybe New York or somewhere like that um to um you know in the past where the, where the actual events were unfolding and i, I think that's great because they they do some scenes where like it's similar imagery so i think there's one scene where he's drinking a glass of water in, in the disclosure agreement and then you see him drinking some another drink elsewhere in the past of it might be an alcohol or something like that and it shows the difference between the two now uh, between the mm. two different mark zuckerbergs um i think one of the best shots in the film and probably a, a great shot in like in natural cinema itself or like just just as a whole really is is when um the camera is leveled on um on mark zuckerberg at the offices at the end the actual facebook offices and obviously um eduardo's coming over to snap his laptop i think that's great because the camera just like sits there on marks marks kind of level and then we'll see him eduardo come over and it's literally like he could be walking for another minute the suspense is great you know and and that's and that's really good. I really also good. think the um, shot where Ed, I think he answered the door. He's with Sean Parker and everything at the the house and Eduardo. It's, I think I'm pretty sure it's, it was raining, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it just fits the mood. Eduardo, I think, is almost sensing the fact that there's maybe maybe betrayal coming. He doesn't want to believe mm. it, but there is sadness and there's darkness. Yeah, it's a really good shot of when the door opens and it's been it's been raining. Building on your point there um, is something I had here. Um, although we don't we don't really find out a lot about Eduardo, we know he's obviously successful in some regard. Uh, whatever, uh, maybe I've just forgotten. Um, but that scene, he when Sean Parker's there, Eduardo catches instantly that he's uh, within the de- one of the deposition scenes. Um, he says something along the line like a psychiatrist would say he was paranoid um, because he he portrays this pretentious douchebag. Um, if you will, and he catches on to that straight away. He catches on that Sean Parker isn't going to be good 
for Mark. And he, and then obviously uh, Mark doesn't catch on to that. Sean Parker then manipulates Mark to some regard. Um, but that scene like, is brilliant what you say. He, the rain suits it because it's kind of like he's outside. Like he knows he, he can expect it happening. Like you said, um, and he just, he doesn't want to accept it because I think he, because of the, the care and the love he has for Mark, he do, he wants to believe that, no, nah, that's my best friend in there. He ain't going to toss me aside like he's, like I've been there for him since the start. But obviously, yeah, we know how that turned out. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think as, if you said earlier about, we don't really know, find out a lot about Eduardo, in that opening scene with Erica, he talks about how Eduardo made up, was it three hundred thousand dollars doing the whole oil futures? Yeah, thing? I wonder. If, I mean, that, and he says it so quickly, you can miss it. And I think that shows again about this film. You can watch the, it back multiple times mm-hmm. and find out more, especially yeah. in that first scene because he speaks at rapid pace. But you, you notice more and more. But yeah, that like that is a way that I think we don't find out too much, right, about his past and how he makes money, how he has it. But yeah, obviously, that how we, in a summer he made three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Not bad. Did you clock the again? It's kind of like uh, Mark. Um, we we see how much, in a way, although like the main story of the creation of Facebook is from Mark's point of view. Part of the, in, at least in my opinion, the way I view the deposition was, it kind of feels like it's at least the start of the deposition scenes. It shifted into Eduardo's point of view. Um, like you, you can feel the love that Eduardo still has. Like it's kind of like a, I shouldn't. But I still like you're still my friend, like mm. that sort of vibe. And he, Mark, in a way, kind of treats Eduardo like shit. Well, he does treat Eduardo like shit. But I don't know if you have a clock. Nearly every single one of their conversations starts with Mark saying, "I need you to do something," or "I need you." Mm. So yeah. it's kind of like he's just keeping Eduardo there to when he for when he's useful. Um, again, kind of adding on to my sort of like anti-hero sort of. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, he, he didn't obviously. I mean, when we say anti-hero, hero, villain, what you want to say, businessman, um, mm. quite realistic in that sense. Yeah, he puts the business first, and I think you do that if you're if you're um, a guy and you've got a few ideas. Whether you've got other guys around you who know more about it or have more money, which Eduardo did. Yeah, keep them guys close to you because even if you just want you just want it to get get going, and it's not um it's not pretty, especially how it ends with how he tries to you know about how how far his shares fall and how we you know he, he yeah kind of eliminated Wilder out of the company, which is not great, but yeah, it, it does show about maybe that Mark's character is not the most likable, and it, maybe that's a reason why Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like it so much because he can't say that those um lawsuits aren't real and the fact yeah. that his friend literally did sue him for that amount of mm. money which is absolutely crazy yeah yeah i i think i think it's great cinema the fact that we, we we've seen such a big story and obviously some of that we're part of facebook you know like we've we've all got facebook accounts and, and we've, we've seen it unfold like a true story in main mainstream cinema is is great and and you know ma- massive credit to mark zuckerberg because obviously the film does just completely you get a complete new image of him i, I just saying what, real quickly with the film I, I think there's two parts of mark in the film um i think there's that innocent side for the first mm-hmm. part where facebook's starting to to rise a little when he first made it and um obviously you have like Eduardo by his side his other his other roommates because he's basically said to his roommates look I want you guys there because oh have I lost second part of the ridiculous things obviously there's that like battle of codes Oh, I thought I lost I, you for a second. Yeah. Oh, I mean, my okay. I don't know how much of that you heard, but yeah. I, I overall, real quickly, I think there's just two parts of Mark. Really, you know, there's, yeah. there's people in the second part of the film where Facebook's at a peak. You know, it's people he doesn't really know. They're not really faithful to him. They're not real friends to Mark. Whereas in that first part of the film, obviously, it's it's people who he's like kind of yeah. grown up with on campus. Absolutely. Um, I have a question. Your favorite? There's a lot of good scenes. You had to just pick one. What scene are you picking for your favorite, Callum? Oh, it had to come to me first. Oh. Oh. Favorite scene. It's difficult. It is difficult. I don't even know if I can pick it. 
Ferran. Oh, <laughs> one one. I think it's it's a different one. Obviously, I, I'm thinking of what the mainstream one might be because it's, yeah. it's quite a lot of people so seen. I'm going to go for a slightly different one. It's when he gets the. It's such a simple moment in the film when you know he's really tired. He's clearly been putting in the hours, probably skipping classes, but doing mm. the work as well. He's in the computer room looking tired. And someone comes in and wants to know if someone's going out with someone or if they're available. And he just answers and he looks all like oh, whatever. But then he just gets that light bulb moment. Yeah. He just runs back to his dorm, finishes the website, and it's live. And the whole Facebook relationship thing was such a massive part of the re- the website. And he when you just see the light bulb strike. Yeah. And then the Eduardo comes and you know they view the website as it goes live. And um, he's got his name at the bottom and he's all happy, but it ends. It ends almost on a bit of a scarier note, almost because then Mark once again needs Eduardo. He needs him for his mailing list. So you've got quite a lot to unpack there. But in, yeah. it's, I don't, yeah, it's a great scene. And probably, I just, I'd probably pick that one to be different because I, I get a feeling what a lot of other people would say is their favorite scene. That's a good shout. That's a good shout, Cal. Yeah. Um, I'd probably go for like again like a little bit of a different uh, scene and not really mainstream but um, the conversation where um, Mark meets Sean Parker for the first time yeah. and Eduardo's there I like the conversation chemistry between them all I like seeing the business just unfold there and then where um, obviously uh, I think Sean Parker was famous for um, yeah I was about to say yeah yeah and obviously Mark's sharing his not um Sean's sharing his knowledge of of like social network and and obviously Mark's just looking at him as if he's his idol as, at his time. So I really like that scene. Just like seeing the business unfold. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fair. I think we got we. I mean, we've got to talk about the uh, the cliche sort of one of Andrew Garfield, yeah. and it is one of my favorite. Just I think because I I'm a, like like Rob said, I'm a ma- I, Andrew Garfield's probably one of my favorite actors of this generation. I think he is one of the greatest actors of uh this generation um the fact i don't think he's actually won a best actor or am i miss i don't think he has has he no he hasn't it'll come one day it, yeah, it he, took dicaprio it took dicaprio years as well i hope yeah. he doesn't have to wait as long as dicaprio did because i thought dicaprio should have won it before he did um Definitely. but i i personally thought he uh andrew Garfield should have potentially won it for hacksaw ridge um that's genuinely one of my favorite films of all time. I absolutely love that film. Um, but obviously, you have to, like, I love that scene where he's like, um, "Is it? Does he turn to Sean Parker and he's like, he's like, sorry, my part is at the cleaners.' Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it, I just love it when he turns and he just says, "You pretentious douchebag." Um, but I'm not going to pick one of those things. I'm going to pick a scene I've already mentioned. It's the end, like three minutes or so, five, five or so minutes. Yeah, where he's yeah. just sat there refreshing Facebook because it's the most human we see Mark. Yeah. That's and true. it's him finally admitting to himself that I need people. Yeah. I can't continue being the way I did. Yeah. Um, social animals. Social animals. Yeah. Social. <laughs> um, and he's still not just, over Erica. All, yeah. And it's, in, in a way, to me, it's, it's a little bit heart wrenching that scene because you, although like you're kind of shown like you are shown a bit like Mark does care. Like he didn't he didn't tell uh, like his lawyers about was it the chicken or something, yeah. um, the chicken story. Oh, yeah. And there are moments where it shows Mark does care, but this this scene really solidifies that and where he fully admits it to himself. Um, and yeah, it's just one of my favorite scenes in the film. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, but we've covered quite a lot on this film, to be fair, between the three of us. Oh, I'm quite proud of this, to be fair. A nice conversation. Um, obviously, yeah. Rob, I don't know if you remember when we done Shutter Island, we gave it a ranking out of 10. And when we get to like a certain milestone, I don't know if we're just going to do it every 10 episodes or something. We should, uh, do you know what? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it every 10 episodes. We'll rank yeah. 10 movies from one to 10. We'll do a special episode where we do it one to 10. So, Shutter Island, we both gave it an 8 out of 10. What would you give The Social Network out of 10? Uh, God, that's a good question. Um, I, you know what? I, I'm going to be a sucker for it. I'm, I'm going to go... 
eight and a half out of ten. And yeah. the reason why it's higher than than Shutter Island is, I I think we we just live live Facebook, don't we? You know, it's, mm. it's part of our generation. So I, to see creation of something that we all know of, yeah, good film, and and it just that's that's the reason why it just beats Shutter Island. Yeah. See, I was going to go eight point five, but I don't want to copy you again. Um, Damn it, so- Harrison! These scores, man. <laughs> I'm going to, do you know what? I think I might push up to, I, I, I might just be really awkward and give it like an 8.7. Um, but I might have to give it a nine. That might change by the next episode to an 8.7, but I am going to give it a nine out of 10 because I genuinely really do like this film. I, I found myself enjoying this film a lot more than what, when I watched Shatter Island. Um, and I think out of the two, if I if I was sat in bed right now and I only had those two movies to pick from, I'd probably pick The Social Network over sh- watching Shutter Island again. Um, but we'll, we'll also get uh, Callum. What would you give out of ten, Callum? I know you're probably going to say a ten, but yeah, five plus five. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a ten out of ten because I'm going to keep a note. I've got I'm keeping a note of every every film we do on my phone. Oh, you can't really see it, but um, yeah, every every film we do. But I want to say thank you for the guest, Callum. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We'll have to get you on on a future one as well to talk about a future film. Because um, like I said in Shutter Island, I don't want to keep on doing films we love. Obviously, if it's yeah. films we've never seen before, um, we don't know if we're going to like the film. We, yeah. we need a challenge now and then. Yeah. We need, this, this, like... this was a challenge, though, because obviously we, I think we went for it, went, went into it, um, obviously not seeing it. Mm. Um, I've never seen it, but I've only seen the start. I think that's it before. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, I recommended this film. But no, I didn't recommend it. Yeah, I did recommend this film because I was like, we'll get a guest on. We'll get Callum on it because I had you in mind from the first episode. We are going to allow the guest to pick the next film. And then on that episode, Rob will pick it and then I'll pick it. And then if we have another guest, la di da di da you understand. You'll understand in a few weeks if you don't. But Callum... Mm-hmm. could you enlighten us on the film you are picking so the film you are going to be seeing is a film from 1987 directed by joel schumacher uh, the lost boys and a uh, dark comedy involving vampires is going to be your film that you're going, going to watch very nice yeah and a challenge a challenge i've never seen have it, you seen so... that rob no have you I no i have not i have not it's on amazon prime um nice. yeah so I'm looking, I am really looking forward to it, to be honest. Um, will it be better than Social Network? We'll never know. Well, we will know in whenever we record it. But yeah. Um, but again, thank you uh, for my co-host, Rob, for joining me. Thank you, mate. Pleasure as always. As always. And thank you, Callum, for joining us as well. Thank you very much. Guys. I hope to see you in the future. Cheers. See in a bit. Guys.